Hello, I'm Professor Paul Bingham, and this is Biochemistry One. Uh, the topic of today's uh, theory uh, segment is cholesterol biosynthesis. So let's put this in context first. We've, we've encountered cholesterol several times in the past, context of, for example, of lipid metabolism or lipid digestion and metabolism, or back in the context of membrane structure. Let me remind you of some of those things so that you'll uh, have a clearer picture of how the cholesterol biosynthesis we're going to talk about today fits into the larger picture. So this is cholesterol structure. It's a little complicated, although it, it certainly is possible to memorize in those courses where your instructors would want you to memorize it. Uh, it'll be a little easier to memorize after you understand where it comes from in, in the segment we're going to do today. Notice that it's extremely hydrophilic, ex or hydrophobic, excuse me, except for the single hydroxyl group at the lower left circled in red here. So it is an amphiphilic molecule in one sense, but not as extremely amphiphilic as, say, a, a, a glycerophospholipid, for example. Um, and uh, let's put that in that structure in context, in the, in first in the case of uh, membrane structure, and then in the case of LDL and HDL particles that move cholesterol around the body, uh, as we talked about earlier. So here is cholesterol pitched upward, and here it is uh, diagrammed in a, in a sort of cartoon fashion at right here in yellow. So notice that the hydroxyl group is that upper circle, and then the rings and the, and the long hydrophobic uh, side chain, linear uh, aliphatic side chain, is as a, as a, uh, di a zigzag line here, as you can see. And then in the context of membranes, it looks like this. So the gray balls here represent the extremely hydrophilic uh, glycerophosphate um, group of uh, uh, glycerol phospholipids in a membrane bilayer. The lines coming down from those, of course, are the two fatty acids on those lipids. And then cholesterol sidles in between, uh, uh, sticking its hydroxyl group up uh, in some, to some d uh, forming some degree of contact with the surrounding, surrounding solvent, with the hydrophobic part buried in the inner uh, membrane as the fatty acid side chains are on the phospholipids here. Uh, cholesterol and the uh, fatty acid side chains on uh, glycerol phospholipids are somewhat different in their structure. And so the properties of the membrane are, are changed by having cholesterol present. And as a result, uh, membranes have different amounts of cholesterol, depending upon whether they're an inner mitochondrial membrane, for example, as opposed to a plasma membrane at the surface of the cell. And moreover, that cholesterol needs to be readily available in order to construct these different membranes out of it. Here are the two particles involved uh, primarily in the movement of uh, endogenous uh, cholesterol, where the big chylomicrons that are moving it out of the uh, digestive system are not diagrammed here. But the HDL and LDL particles, remember HDL are released by tissues and can be taken back up by the liver. And in fact, LDL particles are released by the liver and taken up by uh, other tissues. And uh, these are involved in uh, carrying both um, uh, triacylglycerides, which we're not focused on today, and cholesterol. And cholesterol is carried in two forms, as free cholesterol here, again with its uh, hydro slightly hydrophilic hydroxyl group here as a red circle uh, sticking up in contact with the solvent and the rest of it uh, dangling down uh, amongst the uh, fatty acid side chains, again on phospholipids. And then the cholesterol esters in red here are buried deeply in the oily in, uh, internal uh, part of these HDL or LDL particles. Okay, so cholesterol is made de novo in humans in the liver and is then released into uh, as LDL particles to be taken up by the cells uh, elsewhere in the organism. So in general, the, the cholesterol in, in the a plasma membrane or a mitochondrial membrane, say of a muscle or a brain cell, was made originally in the liver. And the liver makes it, it makes a cholesterol not only for convenience, but also because it is one of the prime users of cholesterol. So a lot of the cholesterol it makes goes into the synthesis, you'll recall, of bile acids that are used to solubilize dietary lipids uh, and pumped down uh, into the gallbladder for storage and then out of both the liver and the gallbladder, gallbladder uh, into the bile duct where they are released into the upper GI tract to solubilize lipids in the food that you eat, as we've talked about earlier in the context of lipid metabolism. Okay. So uh, this uh, title, Hierarchically Nested Combinatoriality, we've talked about this much earlier in our journey when we talked about how to understand, for example, protein structure. So you have amino acids as units making short segments that tend to fold up into, say, 
beta chains or alpha helices, which are then uh, involved in local secondary structures, which in turn are involved in forming tertiary structures and so on. We talked about a way to think about the complexity of globular proteins this way. The, the cholesterol molecule looks a little intimidating to think about in first at first glance, thinking about how to make such a thing. But what you'll see is that a lot of the complexity here emerges from hierarchically nested combinatoriality. So let me remind you of the little analogy. This is the, the phrase from the last sentence of the famous Lincoln's famous Gettysburg Address, government of the people, by the people, and for the people. And notice that each word is made up of letters, so letters make up words. Words are combined to make up phrases, like of the people, and phrases are uh, combined to make uh, uh, words uh, 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 to make phrases and phrases are combined to make clauses like government of the people by the people and for the people so this is a written language analogy of hierarchically nested combinatoriality what you'll see is that when we go about building the cholesterol molecule we're going to do something that's even simpler than written language we're going to start with one little five carbon unit we're going to build it into a 15 carbon unit multiple copies of that five carbon unit and then two copies of that five carbon unit are going to be combined to produce a 30 carbon unit which is in fact the basic backbone of cholesterol that's a linear molecule and then we're going to come and make some intra chain uh, uh, bonds to create the cyclic components of cholesterol that you saw a moment ago and uh, rearrange some methyl groups and double bonds and we're done so the uh, that's what we're going to go through over the next few minutes to understand that uh, a simple hierarchically nested strategy of building uh, this molecule. So notice that the biological system confronted with the challenge of producing a somewhat complicated three-dimensional molecule goes about it in what might be the simplest way imaginable. Remember we said from the very beginning that that remaining focused on the underlying simplicity of biochemistry not being not allowing its superficial details to confuse or bewilder us is one of the keys to really mastering biochemistry. All right. So let's look at the first structural level. As we'll see, cholesterol is built from what are called isoprene units. We've encountered them in passing before. We're now going to look at them a little more carefully. And they are in turn derived from acetyl-CoA, a molecule we are very familiar with, through uh, HMG, hydroxymethylglutarate, or actually hydroxymethylglutaryl-CoA, as you'll see in the next couple of minutes. So here again is uh, cholesterol. Uh, it's made up of a whole string of isoprene units, just strung together to make a long linear chain, as you'll see, and then parts of that chain are uh, are bonded uh, to make the si the circles that you see here, the cyclic parts of the cholesterol molecule. So here is an is a particular isoprene at left, and at right is the basic isoprene unit. So here, the isoprene units in um, um, cholesterol are derived from a very specific source. And let's now look at that. So the source is an intermediate in the synthesis of ketone bodies, which we talked about at great length uh, a couple of segments ago, where uh, acetyl-CoA can be converted into these small molecules, acetoacetate in particular, beta-hydroxybutyrate uh, as well, released from the liver into the circulatory system and taken up by other tissues, particularly the brain during uh, fasting, uh, to supply reduced hydrocarbon needs in lieu of glucose, for example, or fatty acids. It turns out that the pathway to synthesize beta-hydroxybutyrate also is, generates an intermediate which is diverted into the synthesis of cholesterol. So let's look at that. So here is the liver mitochondrial uh, uh, pattern uh, uh, pathway in synthesis of ketone bodies that we talked about at length in an earlier segment. And this intermediate, this what is a transient intermediate in the case of ketone body synthesis, beta-hydroxyglutaryl-CoA or beta-hydroxyglutarate in a, uh, a, a thioester, thioester with CoA, a beta-hydroxyglutaryl, I'm sorry, uh, uh, hydroxymethylglutaryl. Uh, CoA. We're just going to call that for short. It gets hard to say that over and over again. It gets tedious. Uh, HMG CoA, hydroxymethylglutaryl CoA. That is going to be diverted into cholesterol synthesis. In fact, this pathway goes on in the cytosol of the liver. And uh, we notice that the uh, three uh, that three acetyl CoA molecules are condensed in sequence to produce the six carbon molecules in HMG at the bottom. You may recall from our discussion of um, ketone body synthesis that the upper right co acetyl-CoA in the case of ketone body synthesis is recovered and recycled as catalytic. Not so here. All three of these two carbon units are going to be pulled in to make beta-hydroxyglutaryl-CoA. I'm sorry. Yes, hydroxymethyl. 
Uh, so it's beta hydroxy, beta methyl, glutaryl, but let's just say.